Hello from Elena. I am 20 years old, and I'm from Italy, Lombardy to be precise. I was born on the third day in the month of April. I'm the second child in the family of four children that consists of three males and one female, and yes, I'm the only female, surrounded with brothers that had my back each time I was in trouble. Although I stayed with my grandmother, they had their ways of being around me. I was told I lost my parents at an early age. My brothers went to stay with a family friend where they were really maltreated. But they had no choice than to stay with them because they had nowhere else to go. Even though they would come visiting, I and my grandmother once in a while, they tried not to make us feel sad for the maltreatment they were going through. So they keep happy faces each time. I can't remember the early stages of my infant life, as I have never heard nor asked about it from my parents because I never had the chance to. I went to stay with my grandmother immediately after they died, and I also don't have any proof of it because there is no piece of proof left to be proud of as a history of my infancy life. I have passion for writing. I was 12 when I started writing because I always wanted to be a great writer, like Victor Hugo who wrote Les Miserables, or like Roman Roland who wrote John Christopher. They have influenced millions of people through their books. I also wanted to be a great psychologist, like William James or Sigmund Freud, who could read people's mind. Of course, I am nowhere close to these people yet, but I aspire and aim to be like them someday. Back then in my teens, it was mostly silly rhymes and poems of random stories and thoughts, and sadly, a lot about my struggles with my brothers and myself that I wrote about, because the words kept coming and I kept writing. How glad I am that my teens are long gone. I was so depressed. Most times, I had to do some side jobs so myself and my grandmother could survive. We hardly eat three square meals, but we survived each passing day. I am a person who is very positive about every aspect of life. There are many things I like to do, to see, and to experience. I like to read. I like to write. I like to think. I like to talk. I like to listen. I like to see the sunrise in the morning. I like to look at the clouds in the sky with a blank mind. I like to do thought experiment when I cannot sleep in the middle of the night. I like flowers in the spring, rain in the summer, and snow in the winter. Sometimes grandmother will look at me and say, you are going to be so great in life and I can't wait to see you achieve your dreams. Those words gave me strength to keep fighting. So since childhood, I grew up with this best-at-everything attitude in me. I used to be the best scholar in class, active participant in every sphere. And when I was appreciated for this, confidence used to flow through me no matter what. However, as the teenage years hit me, I started to face mental bullying. Slowly, it started affecting me negatively, and as much as I resisted it, I was drawn more into it. Within a few years, my whole focus was shifted to fight this. I lost focus of my academics and my other skills, and the results started reflecting in my life. I was losing what I had. Even my grandmother noticed it. She wasn't happy about it, but she still encouraged me to not give up. She wasn't the type that will force you out of your own will or force you to talk when something goes wrong. She just gives you reason not to give up. But when my school grade results came out, I was suddenly into the reality of myself. The pride I used to see in everyone's eyes my image of a confident girl, it was all gone, and it was hard for me to accept. Day by day, 
as the law says, I attracted it more. There was a time when I had lost all the belief in myself and lost myself completely. I thought of, but I, on a second thought, I had to make my brothers and grandmother proud. Continuous failures kept coming, and screwed up friendships made it even worse. I had lost where to go in life, what to do with my career, and to whom I should seek for help. I knew if I had gone to my grandmother, she would just console me with her words of encouragement, and I was not ready to listen to the same words. Although those words have helped me, but it wasn't what I needed. In the process of me seeking for help, I met one of my teachers in school who called me to his office because he noticed my grades had gone down, and I had not been the way I used to be in class. He sat me down and asked me so many questions. Some of them I can't even remember. He gave me examples of people that were like me and they ended up wasting their lives because they kept to themselves. His words pierced into my heart. I was stirred up to do better, not to allow myself to be mediocre. Just almost immediately after, I got my strength back. Then the coronavirus came. I'm sure you have heard about stories where most people are infected with coronavirus. And as we all know, the coronavirus is a deadly disease, and it's the number one talk of the town in all social media now. A lot of people have been infected with it currently, and I wasn't lucky. As many of us so, I got infected from who knows where or what, actually. It's shocking, right? Yes, I know. Even I haven't come to terms with it. Of all the people who had to be infected, it had to be me. Of all the hardship and circumstances I had been through, I still got an addition to it. Here I was, searching for help so I can get back to the right track of my life. And when I finally found help, coronavirus came to damage it. It was on a sunny day. I noticed I've been coughing heavily, sneezing nonstop. I was scared I had tuberculosis because it was so intense. I still had a little cash with me from the last side job I went to do, so I went to the pharmacy to get drugs to stop the cough, but it kept on going for a week. Immediately, my grandmother noticed this symptom in me. She picked me up, and we drove straight to the hospital, and I tested to be coronavirus positive. My grandmother has been coughing for like two days now, before we went to the hospital, but it wasn't intense, so I paid no attention to it. But unfortunately, the doctor also told my grandmother to diagnose herself, so she had to be sure if she had this disease or not. I was so scared because she had been coughing too, and I paid no attention to it. But unfortunately, my grandmother was also diagnosed of this same disease called coronavirus. I felt so bad. I had promised to give her a better life. But all I did was infect her with a disease that I'm not sure we will survive from. Immediately, we were admitted into the hospital so as not to spread the virus. We were both placed on the same treatment and medication. We were both in the same hospital room, and all my grandmother could do was to shed tears because she never expected myself and her to be a victim of this virus. I remembered when I was little, when she made sure I had food to eat, when she would encourage me with her consistent words. I felt like a failure. I was very unhappy. I was supposed to make her proud, but now, how I have failed. After two days in the hospital, a lot of patients were brought in and they'd been diagnosed of this same virus. The hospital was so full to the extent that there was no bed to accommodate a lot of people that were diagnosed of this virus. As the result of this, a nurse came in and told me she would be moving me away from the bed to the corridor 
reason being that the new patient needs to be admitted immediately. I was pleading with her not to move me away from the bed, but during our conversation, my grandmother overheard us, and she told the nurse not to move me away from the bed. Instead, she will prefer if the nurse can move her instead of me. My grandmother loves me so much that she never prays that anything should happen to me. The nurse then took my grandmother away from the bed, and she was placed in the corridor. It was so painful, me looking at her lying down on the floor helpless. But there was nothing I could do to help the situation. After my grandmother was dropped at the corridor, not up to two days, she died. My grandmother died, and no one cares about her. I wanted to go with her. I felt guilty for infecting her with the virus. Why didn't it take me away instead of her? I wish I had magical powers to bring her back to life, but she was gone. Grandma was gone, never to return. She left me alone in this world. After the death of my grandmother, I still stayed some month in the hospital, lifeless and helpless. It was so difficult to survive. My brothers were scared to visit me because they didn't want to be infected. The doctors had advised them not to come close, else they might get infected as well. Even though they were in charge of the bills, they still didn't come close. At first, I was angry, but then I didn't want their case to be like that of Grandma, so I understood them. They were the only family I had left. On a faithful Monday morning, the clouds were still warm. The wind was blowing slowly, and my eyes were gazed at the sky beside the window, close to my sickbed. I was still in shock and sadness of Grandma's death, lost in thoughts. I heard the voice of the nurse assigned to me that morning. The doctor is coming soon to check you. As she left, all I could think of was why the doctor wanted to check me. There's no hope left. I was going to die anyway. As he came in with a bright smile, he greeted me and told me I was responding to treatment because the virus had reduced in my system. I was so shocked. How that could be possible, I asked him. All he did was smile and left. In less than two weeks, I was diagnosed as being free of coronavirus. Shocking, right? I know. But I can't explain it either. I guess it's what you called a miracle. But I knew luck found me and was giving me a chance to fulfill my dreams. I have just been released from the hospital as a survived person of coronavirus. Just don't know what to do with my life. It's so desperate right now. I was scared to go to my brother's place to meet them, but then I had nowhere else to go. So I went to meet them. On getting there, I met just two of them. They were surprised to see me, but not happy. They told me of how my third brother also got infected of this same coronavirus and died. I was literally on the floor crying and screaming, Why me? I lost another family again. I couldn't bear it. They were able to console me, but they didn't want me to stay with them because they didn't want me to be maltreated as they were. I was hopeless once again. I didn't know what to do or where else to go to. Will I end up sleeping on the streets of Lombardy? I feel so lonely, and life hasn't been fair to me. Where have I gone wrong? What do I do now? Please comment on this video and help me. Hi. I am Rhea. I am a very ambitious and hardworking young girl of 19. I am the second daughter of my parents. People around see me as a beauty diva, but I honestly do not care. We lived an average life since my father couldn't get enough earning from his job. 
As a college student of biology at Phoenix University, I have always been passionate about being a surgeon doctor, so I kept studying. I was so studious that I never had time for partying, clubbing, and making friends. Although I know that I had a lot of admirers, but I still don't give a damn. I remain focused on my course. I lived a stereotyped life in college from the lecture room to the hostel, from the hostel to the library. However, I have one fault. I am an extremist, so you don't have to wonder why I am serious with my academics. I promised my dad to make him proud and tried to make good grades. My world came to a standstill just 24 hours to my first semester examination as I was engrossingly studying biology that I forgot that I have not eaten since morning and it was almost 4 p.m. and I suddenly slumped. The next place I saw myself was in a hospital bed. My father came and the diagnosis proved that I had a hole in my heart that has accumulated badly and the only solution that is beyond therapy is to have a heart transplant. So I was booked for a heart transplant. I wondered where on earth a donor can be gotten from. I felt devastated as I watched myself lying helplessly. Indeed, life dishes up so many. Injury, illness, tragedies, abandonment. Though we may share replica experiences, yet every hurt differs. And no matter how many times our loved ones say, we understand, they don't. You may even get pissed off at their words. It was not easy for me to bear this pain as I was viciously knocked down by life. I was psychologically tripping and falling. I felt the impulse to rise and start moving. Oh, hell no. It's not possible. I was so weak agony descended on me. What shall become of my dreams? Nobody could cheer me up because I was living a friendless life. So my only sucker is my family, my father and mother, and the doctors and nurses who kept speaking life into me. My parents started sourcing for funds to save my life. A lot of thoughts were already running through my brains. Where on earth will my dad get such amount of money? What will happen to me after now? It was quite challenging, but my dad determined to see that his only child lived. After 48 hours, the doctor told us that the only solution to the challenge is to keep checking if there would be instant accident cases that claim lives. In such cases, with the permission of the government, victims can be operated and the organs sold. Coincidentally, There was news of an accident that claimed seven lives that same day. And from one of the victims, they got a heart for the transplant. It took hours to carry out the surgery, but at last it was successful. Everyone was happy as I gradually recovered with added beauty. But I started feeling different within myself. I lost interest for education. I hardly attend lectures, talk more of reading. People said I became rude and inhuman. And then my dress code automatically changed. I started disliking decent and corporate wares and preferred sexy and nude clothing. I started liking dancing. I got myself trained to be a strip dancer. Wherever there is a club, that's where you find me, no matter the time. Luckily enough, I got a job at a strip nightclub in town. I enjoyed my new job and entertain my customers well such that I was second to none in strip dancing. I was having a good time with the job and even started mingling with the manager. We became close and had fun severally. I got attracted to the manager the very first day I came to apply for the job and the manager responded positively. On the night of Boit de la Boit, I rolled badly that my moves and rolls attracted Mr. Black the manager of the strip club. I never knew he was crushing on me. For the very first time as I was dancing, my fist lost control and I almost fell off the strip with my head bowed to the earth, and I suddenly felt a hand that gripped me. On lifting my head, behold, it was Mr. Black. He whispered to me, I love you. 
You remind me of someone special. He carried me down from the stage as I walked into my room panting like a dog that lost a fight. Then I asked who it was I reminded him of. He told me that it was his love that works here in the strip club that died some months ago, and he feels the same thing for me. Even right now, it's as if he is seeing her. I got scared the more. What was the date of the accident, I inquired. 7th of February, 2006, he responded. He also told me that it was seven persons that died and the hospital they were rushed to. I immediately left him there and went to the hospital where my surgery was carried out and made all the inquiries. The document of the transplant was shown to me, as well as the photocopied death certificate which Mr. Black gave me, and it was confirmed that it was Soya's heart that was transplanted to me. My goodness, I couldn't believe it. I dropped a note that explains my findings to him at the bar and went home weak and confused to do anything but I have to start preparing for the night show. I never knew that Black was still in love for me, not minding what I do for a living. How I strip myself at nightclub was not his concern. While in my cubicle, my white towel tied around my waist after having a cool shower, as I was applying my body cream, I heard the sounding of someone opening my door. I felt it was my roommate, but it was not her. It was a tall, heavily built, and the cute guy standing with his legs crossed in front of my door. It was Mr. Black. I was dumbfounded. He calmly closed the door and made his way towards me. I was becoming nervous, and trust me, I have never been this nervous before a man since I became wild doing my strip dance business. However, I decided to overcome this nervousness as I stood up he held me on my slippery arms. There was this feeling that moved within my arteries and veins that got me shaking. This is not me! Immediately he whispered into my ears, You cannot run away from me. Even if you run, you cannot hide. If you hide, there is only one place you can hide, and that is in here, pointing to his heart. As his passionate eyes were already gazing into my eyes, I wondered where this is heading. As I turn round and slowly bending my head just to avoid his charming looks, he raised my head gently, lifting my jaw. As I gazed into his eyes this second time, I became more tensed. He still fixed his brown eyes looking into mine with uttermost devotion and commitment. I was ready to strip because I thought he wanted a quick fun as usual so that I can attend to other customers. Instead, he took the cream that was still in my hands, offering to help me finish the application as he gently applied the cream. Myriads of thought kept flowing in me. I was engrossed with the movement of his hands, and I felt this passionate bliss and heat that is rising within me as I got more intensified. It was truly a mixed feeling. Mr. Black put his arm around my waist, lifting me on the sofa, and knelt before me. Surprisingly, he never did anything but kept looking into my eyes. Rhea, you are indeed the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and I promise to make you happy and fulfill all your dreams. I thank God that my lost love was brought back to me. Please, will you marry me? As he kisses in a golden ring into my mouth. I said yes to him. Yeah, I accepted to marry him because since I met him, I have full joy. Immediately, he carried me up in ecstasy with the tears in his eyes. I will make you the happiest woman on earth, he screamed. We were very happy, laughing without fear and words on the cushion as the stars light up the sky like a treasure in an island. Our hearts skip in ecstasy as they feel the waves current whispering secrets as old as creation to our souls, telling folklores of a magnetic love so far, yet near to immortals. And as the cool morning breeze rushes to our feet like children at play in a sonata moonlight. Those affirmative words spiced with a soothing touch, a healer of sorrows and pains in his boredom, moment when the past is erased and a new beginning born to fertilize the soul and purge every detail of heartbreak away. 
As we lay on the floor of the dunes, I heard the splashing of the waters creating ripples as the birds sing lullaby songs to celebrate a new beginning. A moment carved so deep into the sands of time. A moment that defines who we are. and moment that sticks forever. Never-ending episodes that only the morning dews could melt away into forever. I have come to love a heart as soft as yours, Rhea, my love. This is reality and dream come true. It serenades both body and soul. Black said to me as my strip dance job end that night with Black by my side. I made a mistake just to have a friend. Sometimes it is difficult to tell a story where you have made a mistake. especially if you have been warned many times in the past. Anyway, I've decided to be courageous and tell my experience to help other people who might be in the same situation. I am 14 years old and it is very difficult to fit into a new school, especially when you are a girl. Everyone thinks they know who you are by just seeing your clothes or the things you have or any superficial detail. This is why the first friendship is the most important, to get away from stereotypes and become a person of flesh and blood with their own opinions and tastes. That's how I met this guy, Jeff, who was at the same classes as me. At first he seemed to be as shy as I was. But we quickly started talking about deeper issues and felt that the time in school was not enough. We exchanged phone numbers and it made me very happy to know that I was finally starting to fit into this new place. One Sunday, after talking for hours and hours, he told me that he wanted a photo to show him what I was doing. It did not seem bad, even amused me this new activity in our conversation. This is how I began to send photos in which I appeared washing my teeth, brushing hair, washing dishes, doing homework, until one day, more exact, one night. He asked me to send him a picture of my night clothes. I didn't know if that could be good or bad, and although I was a little doubtful, I decided I didn't care and I sent the photo. He said that he loved my shorts, that I had very nice legs and that probably I had a nice bot too. I felt at first flattered, but then I found very uncomfortable his attitude and changed the subject. The next day, almost at bedtime, he asked for another picture of my night clothes, but this time I had a very short dress and I did not want to. He got annoyed and told me he wouldn't talk to me anymore because I didn't want to play with him. And I was so scared. He was my first friend in this new school and I didn't want to lose him. The next day, almost at bedtime, he asked for another picture of my night clothes. But this time I had a very short dress and I did not want to. He got annoyed and told me he wouldn't talk to me anymore because I didn't want to play with him. And I was so scared. He was my first friend in this new school and I didn't want to lose him. So I sent him that photo. And after those, many more photos. Some even without any clothes. Suddenly, I wasn't feeling well talking to him. I felt like... I was doing something wrong. And the worst of it was when my mom caught me taking one of those pictures with no clothes on. I thought I'd die of shame. But unlike what I thought, she didn't yell at me. Just asked me what was going on. And crying, I told her everything. It was very difficult, but I took courage. and told her that a guy was forcing me to send him photos, and that I agreed, but that I didn't want to do it anymore, and that if it happened again, I would have to tell her immediately. 
Thank you so much for mom, for everything. Just like I was. I'm sure there are a lot of people in my own situation who want to tell their story. I invite you to leave your story in the comments so others can also feel understood. My mom and I. Please, real story animated. Make my story animated. Hi, I'm Tiffany. And I'm almost 17. And I'm fun to be with, like adventures, and in my melancholic nature, I love taking risks. But I don't tolerate it when I'm underrated or intimidated. I love my parents, honestly. The open secret remains that their incompatibility is nothing good to write home about. And that's what kills my joy most times. Dad has always complained about Mom's infidelity in their marriage. The last straw that broke the camel's back was on one fateful day I was right in my room while I believed that Mom had already gone to bed. And for all we know, Dad was gone for a business trip in Australia. And we expected his arrival in two days' time. Suddenly, I began to hear a manly voice in Mom's room. Could Dad have come back by this time? Oh, no. I called Dad's line, and his autoresponder responded that he was in a meeting. That means Dad isn't in town. Then who is this man that I'm hearing his voice in Mom's room? Then, in my suspense mood, I drew nearer to Mom's door to hear this voice better, and lo, it was the black bug guy I normally see Mom drop off whenever she came to pick me up from school. Oh, really? I guess she decided to bring this big guy, Mr. Frank, home tonight, because... The dad isn't at home. I can hear the romantic voices and actions, unlike dad who isn't perfectly romantic. I started peeping through the door handle. I could not believe my eyes. As cool as the evening was, mom's body was so inviting to Mr. Frank that he couldn't hold his emotions anymore. And then he made a move towards her. Suddenly... They were already floating on the cloud, gazing into each other's eyes. Frank gently pulls her so close to his daring heart, hoping they do not part ways even for a second. As Mom wrapped in his arms, imagining them taking a journey into time together, breathing passionate words of love into his ears. Like a bolt from the blues, his fingertips stroke softly throughout her hair with such divine affection and care. Frank's body, creating heat of passion, building within, emitting vibes that erupt deep down her gentle soul, and wrap her in his arms, imagining eternity. As he felt the smoothness of her skin, his mind fantasized as their bodies interlocked in the sea of emotions, creating much energy and passion, heating up deep down their souls. The response was too real for Mom to believe this is happening to him. I can see that from Mom's body language. She softly said to him, Frankie, come and be lost within me forever. I feel myself being a part of you from the onset that I dragged you into the car has been all about Frank inside my mind and the seconds fleets into minutes, minutes ticking into hours and the hours clicking into eternity. It's just a fantasy with such a wonderful design as we both float downstream to where we could be. He kissed her so passionately holding out dreams of daring chances as I feel like flying on angel's wings with you. Frank whispered to her succulent ears, just as the cool morning breeze gathers where shadows will be at sunrise, he held her hands with lips locked in unison until they stroll into the path of scented bliss till the dream ends in the terrestrial sky before the cock crows. Oh my goodness, 
I realize that I've actually been stooping all night in front of Mom's door, following every bit of their moves. I was lucky enough. It was a Saturday morning, and I dozed back to my room because my sleep was actually deprived of me by the two lovebirds. With the look of things, Mom seems to feel very much safe and cared for with Mr. Frank. Then I began to understand what the bone of contention may be in my parents' soured relationship. Mom really needed a man to care for her and treat her like a queen she is, and not business conference today, business meeting tomorrow. That fateful Saturday morning, I was woken up by the shouts and voices of grievances and anger, and I heard my dad's voice very clear, roaring like a lion, just as usual whenever he is scolding at mom. I was getting confused the more this time. Did I mistake dad for Mr. Frank? Just as usual, I crept out of my room. This time, mom's room was not locked. It was wide open. No, it can't be. I have never seen mom and dad in such atmosphere of emotions and bond before. When I came close to her room, I saw him. It was Dad. I greeted both, and of course, I didn't expect them to respond to my greetings anyway. They continued in exchanging words. Then I knew there is a fire on the mountain because Dad came back with an early morning flight. He said on getting to Australia, the meeting was held in a jiffy, and he had to make his way back to the state. Then I heard Mom screaming, Go! 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 I'm tired and fed up with all these. It's over between us. That was how Mom and Dad got separated. Then, according to the law, I live with my mom till date believing that someday a miracle will happen and both of them will come together again. However, I love my parents. I just needed more. More care, more attention, more love and more togetherness. Sincerely, when I see other kids together with their parents go on vacations, shopping, sports, and all that, I feel jealous. During my 16th birthday, I wished I could get all I wanted in my parents. The atmosphere was smiling at me as I blow out the candlesticks, standing in front of a gigantic cake with my both parents standing beside me, one on the left and one on the right, and then they both handed over something wrapped in a gift bag. What could it be? I thought aloud. Wow, it's a phone. I mean, two different lovely phones. What a birthday. Then the music was rolled and I danced and danced in my Cinderella pink gown. Unfortunately, it was a dream. How I wish this is not a mere dream, but a reality. But I believe in dreams becoming reality. I believe it will come to pass one day. Oh, yes, it is my birthday. How I wish it would be celebrated in a grand style. It is funny because when I turned 16, my mom promised to buy me a phone. I kept reminding her about that until one day a strange event that I couldn't understand. Something happened after turning me around a couple of times. And for my 16th birthday, my dad wanted to buy me a phone but my mom never wanted to see me with him or allow him to do anything for me. Note that my mom is this type of independent woman. She insisted that she wants to buy it for me, and I was happy because finally I'm going to have my own phone. On my birthday, mom did not throw any party around for me. All I got was an early morning pat on my back and whispering, Happy birthday, my little angel. I promise. I'm going to get your phone today. Wow, that sounds interesting, and trust me, I kept reminding her that day. Mom, my phone. On that day, I waited till evening. The waiting was too long. My mom keeps saying a bit later, a bit later, but suddenly she asked me to dress up, of which I did, although she was acting as someone who was waiting for somebody until finally she got the call from a colleague which she was waiting for, and we head to shopping. 
I enjoy driving with Mom, so we went in her car. We passed the store where we should stop and buy the phone. Mom, that's the shop, I said in excitement. Rather, she apologized that she needed to visit her colleague at the castle. As a child, there are things I don't debate with Mom. We arrive at the colleague's house, and it was a big house. I loved it. He had three cars and two dogs. Mom knows that I like dogs. So she said to me, Tiffany, you play with the dogs, and I will get back pretty quick. Yes, Mom, I responded. I started playing with Japs and Jade. As I was engrossed in the fun, after some time, another man with a big black car entered the house, and then comes another one, and after five minutes, another one. I was wondering what is going on. My mom came to meet this colleague, and here are three more visitors in there, and I'm not seeing my mom coming out. So I decided to go inside, and upon approach, no one was in the living room. It was silence except the weird noise coming from far away, and it sounded like someone is clapping. One door was opened in one of the rooms, but all of the rooms were dark or less lighted, and I came closer and called Mom. No one answered, and then I came even closer, and the clapping sound started increasing. Clap, clap, clap and sometimes even faster, clap, clap, clap. And then I heard someone saying, yeah, and again, clap, clap, clap. And then I heard the voice of mom saying, yeah, yeah, oh, you are good. Then she increased the speed of the exclamation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you, yeah, yeah, and finally, yes. Let's do it, I thought. This is a fight, or what's going on? At this moment, I called loudly, Mom, are you okay? Everything stopped, and they all get out saying, Yes, let's do it. Congratulations. But then I asked Mom, what was that clapping noise? And all that she said was, I pitched them an idea for a startup business, and yes, they agreed to fund the project. But then one thing that got me thinking was the physical appearance of the three men. They were sweating profusely, looking like men that just engaged on a physical combat, sapped of all their energy with this post-ejaculation, their minds numbed down, tired, and walking slowly, gulping down some drink. Immediately we went to the store, but while we were going, I asked her what were those weird noises, and she said it was nothing serious, they were all excited, and yes, I know she was excited because when she got out from that room, she was a bit reddish in her face somehow, and her voice was cracky, because she really shouted so much. My mom also told me not to discuss what happened with anyone for any reason. I knew she was warning me about this because of my dad. He calls me every two days to know what's happening around mom, and she also told me that this need to be kept secret forever. Forever? Why is she holding this event so tight? For me, I see no big deal in it. Oh, but I will adhere to her instructions. With my sense of curiosity, I also asked her, why are all her colleagues men? There is no other female amongst them except you. She responded that, they couldn't make it that day, but would come in the next meeting. I'm glad that finally my mom is happy, and she's going to make her dream come true. And I've got a new phone. But what was weird is that my mom never started that business, and now we are almost one year from there. This also means that my phone is one year old, too. But I hope she will buy me a new one when I turn 17 next week. What do you guys think? What should I do so my mom will buy me a new phone? Please, like this video if you think it was not a business consultation. And leave a comment if you think it was something else going on.